it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. Today we are going to start our Jetson race car build. This project is modeled off of the MIT race car. Race car is the acronym for Rapid Autonomous Complex Environment Competing Ackerman Steering Robots. I'm just going to call it race car. I think they might have been reaching a little bit there. For the chassis, and the drivetrain of the robot. They use a Traxxas Rally car as the base. So we happen to have one of those here. Let's open it up. It was factory sealed. Okay, looks like it comes out this end. This is a big box. This down here. Ah, it's upside down. That's the issue. <laughs> Take it out of the box the right side up. Go over there, boy. Okay. Racing Orange. I need some skizzers. Aha! We have everything out of the box. Take the body off. There we go. Body's pretty nice. Unfortunately, we're not going to use it. We'll put it aside for the moment. We only care about guts. Let's take a look at it. Ooh, has a nice little suspension. Up and down, up and down. Battery, some instructions, attention. Put these clips aside so we don't lose them. Let's put them back on the body mounting posts. Okay. See what we get in the package. There's a battery charger, some body mounting accessories. Some plastic bits, I have no idea what those do. Here's an optional gear. Here's some tools. 
And the rest is the owner's manual. Those all seem useful. So looking at this, take a look at the undercarriage. Looks like it's pretty stout. The bumper appears to be some type of expanded foam. The suspension seems pretty sturdy. Here's the power cell. This is the motor. Here's the electronic speed controller. Here's the radio receiver. And here is the steering servo. So out of the box, this car will go about 40 miles an hour, which is around 65 kilometers per hour. If you upgrade the battery, it'll go about 60 miles an hour, which is around 100 kilometers per hour or so. So it is definitely fast. It's too fast for our application. Check out what's in this box. So we'll have to gear it down. Ah, this is the remote control. Fire, multifunction, steering trim, neutral, fast. So in fact, this particular electronic speed control has on it a training mode, which will limit its speed. And I have to tell you that I've never owned one of these. So I'm an absolute beginner. Ooh. That's kind of fun. So for robotic control, what we're going to have to be able to do is control the steering. And that looks like a servo of some sort. So we know how to do that. And then we also have to control the motor speed. That looks like another PWM type of arrangement. So it looks like that we can control this with a PWM controller, but we'll see. This is a four-wheel drive model. So you can see this drive shaft is in the middle. The motor drives the differential here. All the shafts are adjustable. It's pretty cool. And on the front end, same type of arrangement. It's a little hidden by the bumper. And what it looks like is that we can mount our platforms off of these, look like M3 or M4 bolts. So we should be able to just screw in some standoffs here to get a platform to sit our computer on. On the 2015 MIT race car, they had a couple of sensors on it. They had a LiDAR unit, they had a camera, and they also had a side looking camera that they used for visual odometry. So they had a platform for the computer and then a platform on top of that for the actual sensors themselves. They also have an IMU to help them with odometry. At MIT they added an extra battery to drive the Jetson TK1 that they had on board. From what I understand for 2016 season they're running a Jetson TX1 they're going to use the same LiDAR unit as last season. 
In addition, they're going to use a structure I.O. sensor, which is an infrared type of 3D sensor, as well as a stereo camera sensor made by Stereo Labs called the Z. So we have a few things we're going to have to figure out. <laughs> the first part is, first task is how to actually charge the power cell. It looks like the charger they gave us is for a DC mount in an automobile cigarette lighter. It's not very useful. But more importantly, going to have to figure out how, how to control this steering servo figure out what pulses we need to send it. We'll have to put the ESC into training mode. For 2016, MIT is going to be using a different ESC, an open source one. So we'll eventually have to upgrade that. The new ESC has, can actually read the motor speeds and things like that. So you get better odometry out of it theoretically at least. We'll have to see. And we'll also have to work and figure out how to mount our platforms. But all that is coming up. A lot of work, but a lot of fun too. <laughs>